Welcome to part 8 of the ISO 20022 series. After a long break, we have resumed the ISO series. In this session, we are going to understand a bit more about CAN T053, the customer account statement. So, a little bit about customer statements. Now, as a financial institution, you have a lot of uh, customers. You have retail customers, you will have corporate customers, and then you will have your bank as a counterparty for your NOSTRO accounts for correspondent banking. Now, for each of these customers, you would be sending out customer account statement. I'm sure as retail customers, you would also be getting statements in a PDF or an Excel format, which you can download from internet banking or mobile banking. But for corporate customers and banks, a PDF statement will not do because they need to in turn send the statements to their ERP or their core banking system for reconciliation because a corporate customer banks will have accounts in multiple financial institutions and they will be getting a lot of statements. Sometimes they get statements every day. So there are various industry standards in terms of customer statements. BAI2 is one standard which is a flat file format. MT940 is something which you must be familiar with because that's the standard uh, from SWIFT. And now CAMT 54 is the one which is going to get, which will be replacing 940 once we uh, go into the uh, so 20022 phase. So let's understand a bit more of CAMT 053. Before that, let's understand what are the various message types in the MT series and what's the equivalent. So we'll not cover all of them, the important ones. 900, 910 via the confirmation of debit and credit. Now, if you look here, it's been replaced by a single message 054 because this has a tag to indicate whether it's a debit or a credit transaction. Similarly, 940 is being replaced by 053, which is the one which we're going to see in this session. 941, 942 are the intraday ones uh, for uh, replaced with CAMT 052. Now a bank or a corporate might require an interim statement because of uh, probably to identify a fraud or to make a decision related to cash management or liquidity and so on. So intraday becomes very important for them. And then uh, we have uh, the other reports which may not be of uh, importance uh, for this particular session. So what are the problems with 940 which led into this transition to CAMT? Now this is a standard MT940 message. Now if you look at this, it's a very bit unstructured, especially the 61 which is the entry, it's very unstructured. It has got very less details and you cannot have more than 390 characters. So to resolve this, we came up with this nice Camtin 053, which has much more details. So the overall structure of a Camtin 053 looks like this, a group header, which is there for any ISO message, the statement, which will have the balance details and the account details, the entry details, the batch and the transaction details and an end of statement. Now let's understand each one of them one by one. The allowable characters of course are mentioned here. No special characters because this is going to be embedded inside an XML. The group tags, the group header is pretty straightforward. Now comes the statement. Now if you look at the statement, you will have the from date and the to date the account details, which is the account number and the account name, the balance information, which is the opening balance, closing balance, and the actual entry information. So if you look at the balance, you will have various types of balance, like any other statement which you, which you will receive, will have an opening balance, closing balance, and so on. Tells you the amount, the balance indicator, and the date. The entry tells you the individual details of each and every transaction. So if it's a monthly statement, you will have, let's say, 100 transactions in that month. So there will be 100 and entry tags. What is of interest is this entry details, which in turn has got batch and TXN details. What exactly is this batch? Now, you might be doing as a corporate a batch transaction for your salary upload or your bulk vendor payment or supply payments. So this tells you the details about the batch as to how many transactions are there, what's the total amount of that batch and so on. And the individual entries, you will be getting it into TXN details. Sometimes you may not have this batch 
because you may not have done a bulk transaction, but the TX and details are important because it tells you the individual details of each and every transaction. We are going to have a look at a sample file. Now let's see the actual file contents. So this is the XML, CAPT053. I have collapsed all the tags. Now let's expand the tags one by one. So let's, this is the group header. What we are more interested in is in the statement. So in the statement, you have the from date tag, which has the from date and the to date. And then you have the account details, the account number, and the counterparty identification, the currency of the account, and of course the account holder description. Next, we go to the balance. Now there are various balance tags as we have seen. So for example, the first one seems to be that of opening balance. So this suggests that the opening balance is 843,000 USD in debit balance. So similarly, one of the tags will be closing balance, closing available balance and so on. Next most important is the transaction summary which tells you that this statement has got 14 entries of the total sum being 140 USD. Nine entries are credit and five entries are debit. So the total sum matches to 140. Then comes the individual entries. So let's take the example of one entry. So this is the first entry of the statement for that month. It's a 10 USD credit. Now let's get into the details of the booking date, the value date, the details of the transaction in brief, the transaction details. Here I don't have the batch details, directly the transaction details. The various reference numbers related to the transaction, the instructed amount and the transaction amount. It could be different in case of a funds transfer where the instructed amount could be different, the transaction amount different due to charges involved. The remittance information, the unstructured data, some additional information and so on. So you can see that this transaction alone has got very rich information related to that single transaction. So similarly, these are the other transactions which are there. And finally, you have the closing tags. Thanks for being with us. In the next part time, we're going to understand a little bit more about the GPI in the context of ISO 20022. Thank you.